Okay, I wanted to show you something that you've never seen before. Um, the only thing that's close to this is my video, and uh, it was incredibly popular. It uh, still gets a comment on a lot, but most people don't know what's going on. They'll uh, make descriptions talking about eddy currents and lens laws, but the one of the biggest mistakes of human stupidity, basically in all branches of science, is this, and that is descriptions are not explanations. Okay, so what we have here is a compass. It's actually a precision compass, rather an expensive one. And the chassis is made out of aluminum. The flywheel is brass, and I have markings on it to show uh, when the, the flywheel will stop, so you could see it. The sharpie markings. So it'd be a six. 65 to 85 percent uh, copper and of course we have a huge honking neodymium uh, iron boron magnet here and it's just an enormous thousand dollar beast here I have magnetic viewing film here you can see the dielectric inertial plane of the magnet and of course I've shown oh my god this sucker actually makes my eyes hurt when I actually uh, lean over it for too long in experimentation that is due to chromatomes chromatomes in the human eyes um, so, now normally you would never be able to see something like this. Now you see this dark ring that exists around here. Now this is actually uh, chromium plated, uh, chrome plated uh, neodymium. Since uh, neodymium is ceramic, they, uh, it corrodes uh, in air, the neodymium iron boron does. And so they chrome plate them. But you can actually see this dark ring that exists in a perfect circle. Now that's not a marking that I made. That's actually the magnetic divergent force. There's a zone here. Now this zone, now I don't have a Gauss meter currently, my buddy does, and I've used one extensively, is you're able to determine that you have a high flux reading right here and right along the centrifugal edge. So what exists around this magnet is a toroidal force divergence. And what exists in the center, which would be uh, trans-Euclidean geometry, is a hyperboloid. If you actually take the negative image of a torus, i.e. a donut, what you have is a hyperboloid. If you know what the hell a hyperboloid is, then you should Google it. So what I'm going to do right now is the only way you'll be able to see this is using an enormous, expensive magnet like this is that uh, you never will see it in a small one because you don't have enough, uh, enough uh, surface area to see the fact that there's a huge zone difference between the centrifugal and the centripetal edge like this. Now like in a normal AC motor or DC motor, what we do is we have a revolving magnet and of course we have a uh, copper coil, but here we have the inverse. We have a stationary magnet and we are going to have the revolving uh, copper coil, but it's not going to be a coil, it's just going to be a flywheel. And I'm going to spin it up using a Dremel tool over here, the flywheel, and since I have markings here, you're going to be able to see what happens. And then you're going to have to explain what's going on. And then I'll tell you exactly what's going on. Okay, so let me spin up the brass flywheel on uh, this gyroscope and we'll take a look at something. Let's use a felt pad from a Dremel tool, and I'm going to place it right at the centripetal convergent center of this magnet. You could hear it spinning, revving up really high. I'm going to try to hold it really stationary, which of course I can't hold it perfectly stationary. Of course I could let go of it for a second too, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you something important. Now, what's happening is I have this flywheel positioned dead center or mostly dead center over the centrifugal excuse me the centripetal convergent vortex and you're able to see this vortex with a ferrule cell okay I explain this in my book uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism which is free by the way I'm working on the fourth edition it's currently in the third edition this sucker will spin and spin and spin and spin until you're so bored that you wouldn't want to watch this damn video anymore okay Spin and spin. It just spin, 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 spin. So now, let's place it at the centrifugal divergent edge and watch what happens. Not touching it. Boom. Immediate breaking. I think I accidentally did tap it right there at the very end. So, let's spin it up. And let's put it at the maximum flow of divergent centrifugal magnetism as I just spun up the flywheel and that would be ejecting out like this. So you're going to have to imagine a torus, a field torus emanating from this magnet. I'm going to place it right at the maximum wave front. Boom! Immediate breaking. You see the marks I placed on the compass? They've stopped. Immediate breaking. Now you think why not put it here? We well, have to imagine a torus 
i.e. a donut, okay? Just think of this as the center of the donut. You can actually see it here because over the past five years it has actually affected the chromium plating and has made a permanent ring right around here. Now this is quantifiably, I hate to use the word quantifiably, it is quantifiable however with a gauss meter. You have an extremely high flux density right here at the dead center but that is the centripetal convergent just think of like a tornado vortex returning right here. We have the return point right here. Okay, so I'm able to sit this flywheel here until the cows come home. It'll just spin and 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 spin. Okay, great. I'm able to put it over here. Boom! Immediate breaking. The fact is that the, the if you take a Gauss meter, and this is an undeniable fact, there's nobody on earth that's going to deny this. Any idiot with a Gauss meter and this huge honking thousand hour magnet will tell. Um, discover it's exactly the same thing. You have an extremely high flux density here with the, uh, the uh, Gauss meter. It tapers off right about here, then it starts increasing, amazingly enough, right where this black ring starts, and it gets really, 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 really high right here. Okay, Really high, tapers off, increases again. So basically, actually the difference, depending on how the magnet, uh, magnetic uh, geometry is and uh, how good the grade of the neodymium iron boron is, we can actually say, oh, there is a, a variable, that the flux density is the same here as it is over here. Although there sometimes exists as much as a 10% variance. So why not tell me, and of course I know the answer, why the sucker will spin and spin and spin right now. I could place it like this, be the same. Uh, I've got nice, it's a nice expensive uh, precision gyroscope, unlike a cheapy gyroscope. It'll spin and spin and spin right here, right like this, right like this. But over here, at the same flux density with uh, the Gauss meter, boom, automatic braking. Now you can only see this on a gigantic, enormous, dangerous monster magnet like this, because you can take a little tiny magnet, you know, obviously take a gyroscope like this, you're always over the centrifugal edge because the magnet is basically the same size as the flywheel. You can only see that on a monster magnet like this, and this is the only place on the internet you're going to see this. It's always incredibly fun to show field flux issues using a precision gyroscope and a monster magnet. So why don't you tell me what you think is going on? If we have a quantifiable Gaussian flux density essentially the same at the centripetal convergent edge, a center, it's not an edge, as we do on the, uh, that slight hum is, uh, I just greased the bearings on this a week ago. Spin and spin and spin until the cows come home. Okay, but if I take it, let me re-grasp it here. I place it right at the flow. Boom. I mean, you can feel it. You can actually feel the invisible force breaking it. And there you see the marks show right up. It just, it broke it immediately. So what do you think is going on there? Well, I basically got the same, uh, I got the same uh, Gaussian flux here on the centrifugal divergent edge as I have on the centripetal convergent edge. Now, here's something that you need to consider. You ever been to Ripley's Museum, believe it or not, there's this uh, neat trick. It's called the invisible faucet. There's this faucet that hangs up in the air and it pours down water. It's like a gigantic faucet, but there's nothing feeding the faucet. So it's like, well, how the water, of course, the trick is that there's an invisible tube that comes right up the center of that stream that feeds it again and then drops it out again. It's a neat little trick. It is uh, very, very amusing, and it's held up with a plastic pipe. So it looks like this faucet that's hanging in the air. It's about yay long. It's pouring out water. Analogously, that's the same thing that's going on in a magnet. What you have, and you have to understand Euclidean geometry and trans-Euclidean geometry, which would be space and counter space. Okay? Everything in the world comes from nothing. And by nothing, I don't mean nothing. I mean unmanifest. This is a key component of human stupidity. And if you understand this, you'll be far, far wiser than nearly 100% of the rest of the world. Nothing is wholly different than unmanifest. Nothing is absence. Unmanifest means it is immaterial. Just like all fields are immaterial. They have no quantity. Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles. Yeah, like a belly button. It's an empty spot. That's where you were given life. 
You know, uh, I hate to be gross, but like a woman's vagina, it's a hole, you know, uh, the hole in it, you know, all life, you know, the center of a cosmic galaxy, I don't care if you want to use a black hole analogy, everything, you know, why does a, a cyclone have a dead center right in the middle where there is no wind, so if you're in the dead center of a hurricane, the weather is beautiful and there is no wind, but at the very edge of the center of that hurricane, you got 250 mile an hour winds, but everything in the universe is like this, so we're not confusing nothing from unmanifest, okay? So you have to understand, start thinking of a donut in your head, now think of the inverse image of that donut, and that is the hyperboloid, that is the trans-Euclidean geometry. Even Pythagoras and Plato talked about this. They, they understood Euclidean geometry, but they weren't interested in Euclidean geometry insofar as they were ultimately interested in the metaphysics of trans-Euclidean geometry, i.e. counter space, i.e. inertia. Okay? What's a really crude analogy of inertia? A stick of dynamite sitting there that someone could play with, I mean, it's nothing. Okay? What would be Euclidean geometry? Exploding the stick of dynamite, you're seeing a mushroom cloud. What are we talking about the ether? We're talking about inertia. Everything in the universe works off two principles, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. So what the hell is going on that this uh, mostly copper brass flywheel will spin and spin until the cow cows come home. I can make like a 10 minute video of just this sitting here right at the, well this is a super powerful magnet. You know it should be the same. No. We have a centrifugal, a centripetal convergence here, this zone right here, increasing right at the dead center, which I'm hovering over right now. And we have a totally different zone over here. This is the centripetal convergent. This is the centrifugal divergent. And that's what happens when I drop it over here. Oh my god, look, I have immediate breaking. If I place it like this, the breaking occurs faster. Why is that? Because the force divergence doesn't come out like this. It comes out like a donut. So this is why, you paying attention, I place the flywheel at an angle like this because it is in direct line with the maximum force divergence from the flywheel. This is electromagnetic retardation. That is actually what it's called, EM retardation. This is the very same thing that people think is proof of Einsteinian relativity is that GPS need the uh, GPS satellites need correction uh, for speed. They think well it has something to do with uh, faster an object goes, it needs correction. No, it has to do with uh, simple Maxwellian electromagnetic retardation. Okay? This flywheel is just like an inverse AC motor or DC generator. You have a spinning magnet Essentially, you have a copper coil around that. That's creation of, uh, say, a, a turbine. It's actually creation of electricity. So what have I done? I've actually inverted that. I've taken a steel magnet instead of a rotating magnet around a coil. And then what I've done is I've taken a steel magnet with a rotating coil, except it doesn't have to be a coil. It's just a copper flywheel, and the brass, this brass uh, flywheel is mostly copper. So what I've done is I've actually uh, uh, given a time component to the copper coil. So this is the inverse of an AC motor. You thinking now? You know, understand how an AC motor works? Very, very simple one. A really, really simple uh, Tesla motor. Spinning magnet, stationary copper coil. What I've done the inverse of that, I have a, a, a stationary magnet and a rotating copper coil. But it doesn't have to be a copper coil, it just has to be a flywheel. So now you know what the hell is going on? You do? You don't? Well, it doesn't make any sense. The face of that magnet should be really, really powerful. You know, why will it spin all day long here, but over here, if I place it right along the wave front of the centrifugal divergent, will I get immediate, hardcore, fast braking. Spin all day long here, immediate braking. Spin all day long here, immediate braking. Any Gauss meter will tell you you have an extremely high flux density right here in the center, boom. Kind of like the drain in your bathtub, if you will. This is exactly what's going on here. <whistles> Boom! Right here. Um, a magnet has two geometries. It has dielectric and it has magnetic. Um, you have a Euclidean geometry, the force divergent torus, 
and you have the trans-Euclidean geometry of counter space, i.e. inertia, the point of rest. Now, Walter Russell would recall this like the God point. I don't care if you use the word God. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean that's what he referred to as the point of the, a rest point. Okay? Ultimately, everything is tethered like a dog on a leash that is staked to the yard. I mean, it could run around all at once. Why? There's not a single straight line in the universe. Everything is curved linear. You have a coherent... What defines a magnet is not any quantity, obviously. This magnet is exactly the same before it was magnetized as it was after it was magnetized. Quantitatively. Qualitatively, what we have is field coherency. And the only way to demonstrate what's going on here, someone will think, well, it's a really powerful magnet. It's going to be the same here as it is here as it is. No. It's like, well, okay, you've shown me that with a Gauss meter that's incredibly strong here, it tapers off here. And anybody with a Gauss meter can prove this. It's 100% undeniable. Really strong here, tapers off, gets really strong again right here at the edge. Okay? So why is this edge, let's say they're both the same, they're usually not, but usually they're very, very close. Why is this center point radically different from the, because this is centripetal convergent and this is centrifugal divergent. What we have here, pay attention, this is the important part, kitties. This is the point of inertia. This is the point of force and motion. Now the flux meter has no idea what the hell the difference between inertia and force in motion is. It only measures Gaussian flux. But what we're talking here is like a fire hose shooting out. And we're talking here is like a drain where you pull the drain on your bathtub. Get it now? Drain, fire hose. Drain, fire hose. Well, they're both the same with the Gauss meter. You know, you got the same flux density right here. You know, three quarter of a Tesla measured. And you got the same flux, well roughly, basically the same. So what's the difference? Centripetal convergent, centrifugal divergent. That's why this brass flywheel, which was mostly copper, behaves radically different here than it does over here. Well, I should be like this. I could put it like this, but since it's a torus, you have to imagine a donut right around the centrifugal edge of this magnet. Now, if you watch this video, despite my squeaky little voice, you've actually learned something today. Oh my god, we've learned the difference between Euclidean and trans-Euclidean geometry and we've understood that every magnet has two force zones, uh, excuse me, two zones, a force zone and an inertia zone. But the way you're able to see it really good is not with a normal magnet like yay big. And even that's a magnet, but yay big is huge. But this is a monster magnet, so I have a diverse uh, surface area here to show you in great detail using a precision gyroscope what is going on and there's nowhere else on earth you're gonna see this video you should send this video to everybody you know and every kid should watch this video because kitties I own every book in the world ever made on magnetism oh boy you can believe me and I can tell you right now that until I wrote my book there's not a single explanation in the universe on this earth specifically as to what magnetism is how a magnet works the smartest minds in the world have been asked, how does a magnet work? You know, it's really simple. Instantaneous action at a distance. There's no particles being emitted from this magnet. You know, you got idiots like Richard Feynman, you know, who was asked about, uh, I, I, uh, I made a video about how stupid he was. He made a video, he was very asked very simply by a BBC News reporter, I believe it was. How does a magnet work, man? And uh, he made an analogy about an old woman slipping on. He's got no clue. He's dead now. This guy was heralded as the god of quantum physics. You know, he wrote QED, Strange Theory of Light and Matter. He had no idea how a magnet works. I'm telling you right now, Mother Nature, she doesn't have a calculator. She really, 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 really simple. And she only knows two things. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. The torus is force in motion, and the hyperboloid is, is, yes, inertia and acceleration. Euclidean space, trans-Euclidean counter space, i.e. inertia. Got it? Thank you. You should love this video, and you should watch it twice. And uh, this is the only video that I've said that uh, will say that you should spread to all your friends and have them watch because it is important. And if you understand what I said in this video and you get it, then you will really, 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 really be understanding something that is so universally important that uh, 
you will have, before you've croaked, you will have learned uh, one of the hidden secrets of the universe because this is it, baby. And it is so simple. Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. She works really, really, really simple. Everything is a field pressure mediation and she only sta understands two things, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Centrifugal, centripetal, inertia and force. Very, 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 very simplex. It doesn't get any more simplex than that. Anyway, thanks for watching. There's no trickery in this video. Everything I said is, uh, is, uh, can be uh, duplicated by anybody. But nobody else has this video, and nobody else has usually a $1,000 monster magnet either. <laughs> but if you want to get one and duplicate this yourself, you'll get the same results. Okay? Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. And uh, remember, my book is totally free. Free! There's no strings attached. You can download it off archive.org. It's called Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, 3rd edition, 4th edition, due out soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.